Okay, so in this video, we attempt to demystify some aspects of heavy metals and soils. So whether you're a farmer who is wanting to lease land or purchase land, or you're a backyard gardener who's heard of contamination in your area, uh, we hope this video will be useful to you. Join us as we lead you into the mercury world of heavy metal. So hopefully you can save your arsenic and uh, uh, maybe a nickel. And uh, if you're watching this on Chromium, uh, watch out, you might get a little bit of copper deficiency. So heavy metals get a bad rap. Um, they occur naturally in nature, uh, but in lower doses. It's when humans get involved um, and they start occurring in higher doses um, that they become uh, have a negative impact on the environment and people. Yeah, and some of the heavy metals that we're, uh, you may have heard of, like cadmium, lead, um, arsenic, and um, mercury, those are some of the ones that are famous for causing many health issues for mm -hmm. humans. And of course, at the very low doses, they're fine, mm -hmm. but it's when we get exposed to uh, doses that are higher than uh, natural occurring, then that's when we start to feel um, uh, get sick and uh, have many different health uh, issues. When we were looking at leasing the land here in Blahadatne, we were aware that um, there was historical contamination from the smelter and trail, the Tekkeminko smelter. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first thing we did was uh, get samples of soil and send it off to be analyzed. Um, and we uh, we're lucky, um, we have a soil scientist friend in Kamloops, Kent Watson, um, mm -hmm. who was willing to interpret some of the data um, that we received back from the results because they're really, it was very difficult to find any data on heavy metal um, in soil um, anywhere. So uh, yeah, we were hoping that he could break it down a bit more for us. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for meeting with us. We have been scratching our head, trying to figure out a way like to understand the test result. And without, you know, perfect opportunity, we'll contact you and see what you think about it. Um, okay. So before I get into the question, do you want to just give us um, a little bit about your own background or how you got into soul science um, so that we can share that with people before we start talking about the question? Sure. Um... I did my master's degree in agriculture and specialized in soils. And my main focus is on soil classification and describing soils in the field. And that's what I, I do. Um, I then got a job at was then Caribou College back in 1986 or something uh, when they started their forestry transfer program that developed into their natural resource science degree program, which Anastasia took. Mm -hmm. And I taught soils in there. And I, I've just been passionate about it. I don't know why. Well, I actually figured that out. I was in a soil pit one day and describing a soils for a guy. And he, he looked at me, he says, every time you're in the soil pit, there's this incredible smile on your face. So <laughs> it's reconnecting to the earth, I think. I don't know. But yeah, I just I just love it. Mm -hmm. And I retired from Thompson Rivers University in um, 2016, but I still do soil contract work. I'm working with the Alberta Sewage Association, training people who put in septic systems how to classify their soils. So that's my new career. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. And uh, okay, so the first question we have is basically um, we got, you know, we were concerned about. Um, heavy metal contamination because of the history of the land that we are leasing. So mm -hmm. there was, back in the day, the Cominco was uh, polluting the whole area around Trail and Kalsagar and much larger area. And so there's evidence that some places still have heavy metal contamination in the soil. So to be safe, we decided to do a test as well. So we shared the full test results uh, with you. But how, how do we go about interpreting that result? If, uh, well, first of all, um, I have um, some tables here from another report. Um, mm -hmm. I've been reviewing uh, soils data and reports from Highland Valley who are planning to expand their mine. So I pulled out these tables and they're from the Canadian Environmental Quality Guidelines. So if you type in CCME guidelines, it'll take you to that site. 
Um, once you're there, you have choices as to where to go. But what I have is um, tables of the heavy metals from the report I worked on and the industrial concentrations and the um, maximum tolerance levels for cattle and horses. Okay. Right. So what I did is I went through that table and with your data that you sent, the only thing that is over one of the guidelines is the industrial concentration limit for arsenic. It's 19 mm -hmm. uh, milligrams per kilogram. And the industrial concentration limit is 12, but the uh, cattle horse consumption can be up to 30. All of your other results are less than these standards. Mm, okay. okay. They're all less. And, um, in most cases, uh, like considerably less. less. Mm -hmm. So these results look good. I wasn't aware that Kaminko was in that part of the world, but I know it did a lot of um, pollution damage. And I remember going through trail uh, many, many years ago when they were still operating their smelter, there was no vegetation anywhere nothing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and now i went through trail oh four or five years ago on a soils tour and the vegetation has come back extremely well mm -hmm. so from what you've sent me everything seems to be okay um so that's a from basing on this but you could also go onto the website and if you wanted to dig for more information you could mm -hmm. it means some scientific um reading Anastasia. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so if you want to do that, uh, be my guest. But right now, from what I'm seeing on this, on your uh, certificate of analysis, everything's good. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Um, that helps a lot. Yeah. That's it's very that really encouraging. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sure. I have also a table here that I can scan and send you as well that gives the range of heavy metal concentrations in, actually I can scan the whole article for you, mm -hmm. heavy metal concentrations of soil in soils. And it gives the range of all the heavy metals that naturally occur in the soils. Oh. And I think that will be helpful for you to see. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So cadmium, copper, molybdenum, lead, zinc are found in fertilizers in, in low amounts because plants do need some uh, nutrients, but um, I don't think they need lead. Mm -hmm. um, so irrigation water, you can find cadmium and iron. And iron is naturally high in the soils anyways. Mm -hmm. um, manures and compost, here you get cadmium, chromium, copper, iron, mercury, manganese, molybdenum, uh, nickel, lead and zinc. Okay. All of those in high concentrations are going to be. So if you're adding manures and composts, that's something you might want to test for. So biosolids, this is interesting because you've got cadmium, chromium, copper, iron, uh, mercury, manganese, molybdenum, nickel, lead, zinc, copper, uh, manganese again. Oh, that's soil sediments. Okay. Um, lead and zinc so yeah. the biosolid industry they're promoting using it but they have concentrations of heavy metals and i don't know if they've got a way to remove them where are they where are they coming from they're coming from most of our cleaning products oh. um, um birth control pills right. everything that goes down the drain okay okay so Good all point. of our household cleaning products no idea what's in all of those things. That's where they're coming from. They're coming from the chemical industry. They're not, if we eat a normal diet and measured the heavy metals in our excrement, they probably be pretty low. It's all these other things that, that uh, we put down the drain. Oh, wow. So you are over on lead for, for animals and that can be picked up simulated through through plants okay so that's the other thing you've got to look at is what 
elements are plants picking up. Right. So the lead is high. And for industrial, they're allowed 600, 600. milligrams per kilogram. <clears throat> um, and then the zinc is 225 for you. Uh, the industrial is 410 and 500 for cattle and horses. Wow. But the reason those two are high, when you look at your other numbers, they're all less than 20. Right. So those two are high because of the King Kaminko mining operations that took mm -hmm. place and the, the, um, um, you know, the tailings and, from the air and all of that stuff. So that's why those two numbers are high, but they're still within the guidelines except for lead for cattle and horses. Right. Okay. So we, we have to do maybe more research. Oh, I did work for Kaminko back in 1972 and 73 in the Yukon prospecting as a student. And uh, we were always sending samples back and getting the, the um, concentrations of lead and zinc in those samples and they would come back pretty quick and they were pretty accurate as far as i'm as far as i know yeah mm -hmm. okay that's good to know um do you recommend that you know if people are leasing the farmers are leasing land or they're looking at purchasing land do you recommend doing heavy metal testing i would definitely if it's already a farm you have no idea right right um so i would do that i would definitely do that before you made that purchase or lease it yeah okay yeah. And we didn't know at the beginning either. We assumed that if we do a soil test, mm -hmm. automatically they're going to look into heavy metals. But I guess mm -hmm. that's not oh, typical, yeah. right? So you have to ask? No, you have to ask for what you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to be very specific. Yeah, because mm -hmm. each one's a different test. Yeah. And like you said, they're expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know what your nitrogen is, if you want to know what your phosphorus is, if you want to know those nutrients you ask for those in, yeah because uh, i have this encyclopedia on soils i mean it's it's two thousand pages right oh. and i just looked up heavy metals last night and came up with this um and it's a really interesting topic and i think um and also in well in the in the arctic i mean heavy metals are being carried in the atmosphere too right, right. from all of you look at all the smokestacks for example here in Kamloops, when Afton Mines was running, um, they were at a smelter and they had a limit of pounds per mercury per day that they could put into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Every soil report that I saw of that, because I was involved with the KPM, K. HMG uh, Ajax review. Thank God that didn't go through. I'm going to be political here. Yeah. Um, but so I reviewed the mercury level results from Afton mines. And they were always, and these were environmental protection agency results or no, they had the, the mine had to do the results. They went to the environmental protection agency and in every case, they were emitting 10 pounds of mercury a day. It was part of the smelting process. And the environment did not shut them down. Just... And that went on for, I think, three years. The concentration of mercury ended up just on the north end of the Overlander Bridge. Really? In a trailer park there were the highest concentrations in the soil. Huh. Um, Holy smokes. So the smelting process, so the smelting process that's why you have these high levels and Kamiko had all of this same thing happened in Sudbury, Ontario. That was a huge, huge area. When I started doing remote sensing work back in the seventies, um, looking at the new satellite imagery we're starting to get and the devastation from these smelters is horrendous. So, um, it's carried in the atmosphere. They're mm -hmm. finding higher and higher levels of heavy metals in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be detrimental to, to wildlife. And so it's, it's in the atmosphere. It's, it's, uh, and the more pollution we put out there, the worse it's going to get. Mm -hmm. Did you have my soils textbook soils illustrated when you took yeah. this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm planning a rewrite of that this winter. Ooh. I have more, more photographs, be more information. 
And um, I'm also at the same time creating a version for the on-site septic system people. Oh, cool. Because they just need, they don't need that whole book. Right. But they need um, a condensed version of it. Okay. And oh. um, so. Will it be, are, is it going to be available? Could we order it online? Could we get it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Right now you can order um, Soils Illustrated through my website, uh, cool. edwardkentwatson.com. The soil, well, the Soils Illustrated textbook is amazing we still use it I, that's the one of the very few books from university i kept with your soils illustrated because it, it again it's so clear and the photos the photos are amazing that's what really helps when you're collecting soil for your sample to send away uh, it's best to get it from the top six inches of soil you don't have to go that deep because most most of them are in the, the top top bit of soil um, and then it's best to send it directly to a lab, not go through a middleman or anything like that. So find a lab that does the testing and send it to, to them directly. And it's very important to specify what you're looking for. There are mm -hmm. generally two types of uh, soil tests. If uh, you just ask for a soil test and don't specify, they're just going to tell you about the fertility, like the NPK levels and some other uh, nutrients in the soil. But they won't tell you, like they're not going to test your soil for lead and mercury and arsenic and things like that. So you want to specify uh, that you want to have all the different heavy metals tested and um, make that really clearly communicated with them so that you can get the right results back. Now, when you get your soil results back, it's gonna look something like this. And you will see a table with a whole bunch of different heavy metals listed. And there will be, uh, the, the amount is gonna be uh, recorded in parts per million or, uh, micro uh, or milligram per kilogram or microgram per gram uh, those units are all essentially the same they're all parts per million and that's what the heavy metals are usually measured in in the soil and uh, probably most of them are going to be present right yeah yeah because heavy metals occur naturally in nature you will see um, some amount of uh, most likely some amount of, of all the heavy metals uh, present in your soil so don't panic. Now is the time to um, use your head, use your brain, <laughs> and do some research and compare your results to um, literature um, of safe levels. So yeah. Yeah, and uh, we started doing some uh, literature review when we got our results and found a few references. But it, it's a pretty tedious process. So we were so happy to talk to Kent, and he cleared a lot of things up. And uh, he did mention that you know our soil is safe to use. Um, the only thing that stood out was the level of lead. So uh, our, specifically, our um, soil has a little bit higher amount of lead than um, is set as a standard in Canada. Mm -hmm. So um, there's an organization that, in Canadian organization in 1999, that um, I will put a reference in the video, that they provided uh, health guidelines for amount of lead in soil, and they said. Uh, 140 parts per million is sort of um, a general safe guideline. Now, different countries, different regions in the world, they have their own guidelines and they're all over the place. And so in many of those cases, we actually fall within the safe region. Mm -hmm. But in Canada, um, our lead is a little high. Now, uh, this doesn't mean that we just need to panic mm -hmm. and run away. Uh, just we need to keep that in mind with how we are uh, doing our agricultural work here that there is a little bit of excess lead and so we need to come up with strategies to deal with that or work around it So what can we do to deal with this extra lead that's in our soil? Uh, well, there's a few different methods. Uh, one of them is phytoremediation, uh, which we're very excited to try um, It's the use of plants to capture um, the excess heavy metals in soil. So for example some flowers yay, <laughs> <laughs> Comfrey um, they'll capture lead and then you remove the plants out of the soil and compost them in a certain way that um, so that they don't re-enter the, the environment. And now lead is one of those heavy metals that is actually not a huge problem if we are growing fruit or berries mm -hmm. uh, because the plants do a pretty good job of filtering that out so that doesn't actually get you know um, many people think that you know if your soil is contaminated plants are gonna basically suck everything and it's gonna you know all everything you grow is gonna be contaminated but actually that's not the case so there's many different uh, filtering that happens uh, in different plants and the way actually lead ends up in our system is usually not because it's is getting sucked into the food and vegetables is usually because dirt gets picked up and then gets connected to for example leafy greens and things like that 
So uh, we just have to be smart about how we plant, for example, our own uh, garden for our, you know food and vegetable for the vegetables that we're growing for ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as our main plant, which is growing the orchard, mm -hmm. it doesn't pose any threat because the trees are going to do an you know amazing job. The berry bushes are going to do an amazing job of filtering everything out. So we are going to be good to go there. We're going to continue doing research uh, research on this topic because it, there is a lot to know in the yeah, and it's a heavy one. Huh? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, we are also going to keep in contact with Kent Watson and hopefully have another interview with him in the future um, to to learn a bit more about everything. So if you have any questions or concerns or anything, please feel free to uh, get in touch with us, mm -hmm. and we can either pass them along with Kent or um, pass along any information that we might have. Yeah. And um, uh, actually, if, if you want to stay in touch and see our weekly videos, a, a lot of our friends actually miss our videos once in a while because it gets buried in. Uh, we still, we don't have a, you know, we don't uh, get a lot of attention on YouTube. It's just a group of friends and family basically that are watching it right now. Yes, but if you want to stay in touch, one of the great ways is to um, use the bell. And then if you hit that bell, you get an email every time you put a video out, which is every Sunday, hopefully, uh, unless we're really late, like today. <laughs> but you should still get it today. And um, yeah, just keep, that's it, I think. Yeah. Uh, just keep in touch and uh, we would love to hear comments and questions from you. Yes. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>